you know, I don't play these games with the he said, she said, she said, he said thing. I, I don't do that. <laughs> that, okay. Dude, I, I, I'm 50 years of age, okay. That, that kind of mentality, you got to grow up a little bit, okay. I don't believe in coincidences, okay. And remember, dear people, um, y you know, <laughs> you you don't got to prove anything to who, me. I, who am I? Who am I? I'm dirt, okay. Um, who are you, some of you people, trying to deceive? I think it's yourselves. But I don't play this, he said, she said. Like I said, I'm 50 years of age. I don't know how much time I got left. I could have a stroke or a heart attack at any moment, okay? I, even though I'm doing my best to try to be healthier, okay? Because your body, you know, changes when you get older, you know? Uh, especially when you have treated your body the way I have, okay? So I, I don't play those kinds of things. I don't do that, okay? I don't. And I don't believe in coincidences. I don't, all right? Listen, you want to justify something which you know deep down in your heart is wrong, but you're going to do it anyway, you're going to reap, trust me, you're going to reap what you sow. And you need to get to a point in your walk when you at least face up to the wrong decision that you are knowingly, apparently going to make. Okay? Because at the end of the day, what is a saint not supposed to do? Excuses. I ain't got time for that. You know who don't got time for that? The Lord don't got time for that. Romans chapter 9. Uh, verses 1 on to verse 5. Please get the authorized version of the scriptures and please read along with me in the scriptures we're going to be looking at. <laughs> Dude, don't trust me. You, trust this. The authorized version of the scriptures. Trust what God hath said. Trust this. Don't trust me. Trust this. Okay? This is perfect. This is infallible. I make mistakes. That's why you've got to read along. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The perfect and errant, given by inspiration, word of God. The authorized version. Okay? There are people out there that I wish were brethren. I really do. I really, really do. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are those who go past the point of no return. God can save anybody. Okay, yes, he can. The Calvinistic reprobate doctrine, also which is taught by uh, sodomites like Stephen Anderson, um, that, that's, no, God can save anybody. Not at gunpoint, not by force. God is not a God of coercion. But see, there comes a point in a man or woman's life where they will go so far that they cannot come back because of the choices they've made. Okay, God can save anybody. The minute you start saying someone is unsavable, that's heresy. Undeniable heresy. Undeniable heresy. But, see, the probability of a majority of these people, of them actually becoming born again and saved, it's, 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 it's like the, the level of the mind of the free gracer. It's that small. And ye shall know them by their fruits. See, when you talk to a Christian or someone who thinks they're saved and you, you go through things with them scripturally 
and they put up the dukes. Now, we're, now let's let's be real with each other. Uh, nobody likes to be rebuked. <laughs> In time, you you develop a taste for it because number one, it shows that uh, brethren care about you, and number two, it also shows that God, you know, <laughs> is the one. It's like, hey, you, you know. You need to be right, okay? So, in time, that comes with nobody likes to be rebuked, right? Okay, nobody does. I mean, in time, like I said, you develop a flavor, a taste for it, because it's better for you, okay? It is, and of course, it reflects him even greater, okay? But like I said, there are some people, there are some people, who could put on a nice facade and they could say all the right words and because you have a predisposition to an affection that you have for someone the minute they say something that they know is going to tickle your ears you're going to you're counting ceiling titles it's like how it, it, it goes back to how many times are you going to knowingly touch that hot handle on a pan and get your hand burnt? Well, Brad, even you say that we, we shouldn't harden our hearts. You're right. But what? But shame me once, shame on me. Shame me, uh, shame, shame me once, shame on you. Shame me twice, shame on me. There is when you have to adopt the mentality of the Missourian. Show me something. I'll show you something. But you got to kind of, it's like, okay, let's, let's go on with this. Let's go on with this. There are people out there who I wish were brethren. The Canadian talk show host. I always point to him because, number one, I mean, I've, I've watched a few of his things. When the guy stays in his element, you know, like talking, he did this one video about politics and whatnot, and I watched it. I actually sat here and watched and listened. It was good. The guy's a lost devil. Okay? The guy's a lost devil. I wish that guy was our brother. God can save him. But the probability is... <laughs> But see, when you present the truth of Scripture to people like that, like repentance, it's like, what do they do? They put up the dukes to defend themselves and their satanic doctrine. Well, repentance is going from faith to, uh, from belief to... Uh, it, it, you, you lose the moment. There are some people out there I wish were brethren. I do. And if they were to ever become brethren or sisters, you know, it'd be great. Yay! Yay! <laughs> you know? And, you know, a perfect example also of this is the bloke. That, that, that guy's lost and he ain't ever going to be saved. Yes, the Lord can save him. But come on, dude, that I've got evidence showing about, you know, how the longevity and the longer you go in error and in sin, the harder it gets for you. Then one second. Sorry about that. Yes. The longer you prolong your life in sin and deception, the longer you go, the harder it gets. You're, you're set in your ways. Okay? But there are people I wish, I wish, would become our brethren. I really do. I really do. What was the old saying? Wishing one hand in something in the other. See what uh, fills up first. Romans chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 5. This is a warning. Also, see, see this? Okay. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish, there's wish, wish does appear in scripture, that myself were accursed from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Now, whoa, 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 
time out there. Now, in the description box, there will be the video from Murderer to Messenger, where we go over the life of Paul, okay? Our example, okay? A Hebrew of the Hebrews. <laughs> okay, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. All right, I'm writing this now. Okay. Hebrew of the Hebrews. Look at that verse. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul actually meant that. Paul actually would have done that if he could. Think about that. Stop. Stop. Think. Now, I'm going to make this personal. Once you go the way of the cross, the elect way, you don't boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. Okay? No, you don't do that. You go the way God has pros prescribed, the way he has elected, the way he chose, the way of the cross. Okay? You go that way, and he saves you. You are sealed. Once saved, always saved. How do you know you're sealed? You have God the Father dwelling within you permanently. Nothing you can do is going to make him go. Okay? You're sealed. So, what Paul is saying there is, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ, from my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Perspective for you. Would you be willing to forgo? It, this is a hypothetical. This is, because it's not your salvation to lose unless you're a Christian. Okay? Saints, we can't lose what isn't ours. Hypothetically. Think about this. Would you be willing to forfeit salvation in order to see someone else to come to salvation? Now, before you get all, you know, high and mighty on yourself, think about that. And I'm going to give you a perspective. Okay? Would I be willing to do that? To see the beast of Blackpool actually saved? Would I be willing to have... This is hypothetical. Because once you go the way of the cross and the Lord saves you, you're once saved, always saved. You're sealed until the day of redemption. That, that, that's it. Hypothetically. Would I forgo salvation to see the Canadian talk show host come to true salvation? You? Would I? Oh, I don't. I know that. I don't pray not for these people. I understand that, but that's the the mentality there, the thoughts, the heart of Paul. Like I said, that I mean, we we can't forfeit or lose what isn't ours. Okay, we can't. As saints, as, as a Christian, sure, a Christian, yeah, go ahead. You Christians get out of here. But, think about that. And, you know, Paul wasn't doing that for any glory. And see, that's where these guys will come in to, you know, Put on this facade that they're all holy and righteous, holier than thou. Like the hunter from England. That guy's always a really good example to me to remember that. Because he, you talk about false humility. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Jesuit coadjutor. Jesuit provincial. Yeah. That's a sin. Shut up. There again. <laughs> hey, here's another one for you to think about. Would you forgo salvation 
<laughs> that Arturo Sosa would be saved. What? There you go, the head of the Jesuit order. But think about that. Now think about that. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. You know, Job, Job, the Lord gave, Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When in one fell swoop, he lost almost everything. Then he loses his health. And he's like, what, shall we not receive evil at the hands of God and not just good only? I just bright eyes that. And see, there's some out there, you know, you know. If if we had been in the days of our fathers, we wouldn't have killed the prophets. It's like well, right there, you're showing that you are the sons of your fathers who killed the prophets. I don't know. What would you do? We've covered this before, okay? But it, it's uh, it's a very meat subject to bring up now. There are some of you out there who are making some really horrible decisions. I can say that to you from experience. Knowing what you're getting yourself into is going to not work out for you. But you have this hope in your heart Maybe that you could be the deciding factor. Maybe you can. That is a possibility. The impossible is possible with God. But how many times are you going to grab that hot handle of that pan and get burnt? Before you adopt the uh, Missourian mule mentality. I love you, but you, you need to show me something. Verse 4 in Romans 9. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving unto the law, and the services, and the service of God, and the promises? Whose are the fathers? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Acts 26. Acts 26. I was reading this today, you know, like a, uh, just so you know, we're what, 18 minutes in? Uh, dear brethren who have tried to get a hold of me the past couple of days and I haven't responded, we got a lot of stuff going on right now, okay? I got, um, got a lot of cleaning to do, a lot of preparing for things to do. Uh, we, um, we're going we're gonna to lose our car for a little while. Because we don't have the, the insurance for it and whatnot. And wh what, you don't care about that. But the point is, we've got, and we got like this inspection coming today. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we, we've got a lot of stuff going on in the background. Okay? Uh, dear brother from Oregon, I, I, sorry. Okay? Forgive me, brethren. Forgive me. We got stuff going on. Okay? This whole we uh, uh dear brother, uh forgive me. We we got a lot of stuff going on. This weekend too is going to be gotta deal with that garage out there. You needed to know that. But we got stuff going on behind the scenes uh, that is precedent right now. So okay, that's not an excuse. That's a reason. I have no excuse. For not responding back to you, brethren. I have no excuse. I don't. And I am sorry. Please forgive me. Okay? The reason why, the reason why, is because we got a lot of stuff going on. Okay? But I have no excuse for not reaching out, at least with a text message. All right? 
So, brethren, please have patience with your servant, and please forgive me that wrong. Okay? I'm sorry. I don't make a, I'm not making an excuse. Okay? But, Acts 26, verses 9 on to verse 11. Paul. Paul. See, the difference between someone who wants truth and someone who wants to justify themselves is when they are presented with truth. Truth changes them. They, people who are false, want to change truth to fit them. No, truth changes them. That they may fit to truth, not fit truth to them. I verily thought with myself, Acts 26, 9 on to 11. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Galatians 1. Just a couple of verses. This ain't going to be that big of a video. Okay? Galatians 1. 13 on to verse 14. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God. Not Christian. And wasted it. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my, my, above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. And then we go to Philippians. This is, okay. Ah. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, hmm. verses 4, on to verse 11. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. He did it all. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Now we're going to stop right there. Then we're going to continue on, okay? But don't worry, we're going to come back to this. First Timothy twelve, uh, First Timothy chapter one, verses twelve on to verse sixteen. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy. Why? Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul gave consent unto the saints being killed. He brought them, kind of like his, you know, the Jews did with Jesus, or the Hebraic Jews did with Jesus. They handed him over to Rome to be killed. That's what Paul did. You think you're beyond salvation. You probably, you just don't want the salvation that truly is. You want to believe in your own little preconceived notion of what truth is. Hence the free gracer, hence the Catholic, hence the Pentecostal, hence some of the flavors of the Baptists, and so on and so on and so on. You have this preconceived notion of what you want truth to be. But when confronted with the truth, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life, what ought to happen? Well, again, the life of Paul, would, would, video will be in there. Actually, 
That will be the first one in the description box for you, okay? Back to Philippians 3, picking up at verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And do count them but done that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And all the fake do this. Do what? I've been baptized. I've had the cookie. I've had the wine. I just believed and received. I'm at church every time the doors are open. Uh, my skin, I have a certain skin color. I speak in tongues. Your own righteousness. You know how you know? Because when scratched, they always re revert back to that. To defend themselves. You can rail on me all day and all night. It's like you're right. You're right. I don't deserve to be saved. I don't deserve his mercy. And it is only by his grace. Unmerited favor. That he bestowed upon me. That I am anything. I am nothing. That's the difference between a saint and someone who ain't. I didn't mean that the way it sounded, but it works. That I may know him relationally and the power of his resurrection. See, you have to die in order to be made a new creature. Born again. Paul never said born again. You're right. He just defined what it was to be born again. Okay? And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Acts 26 again. Acts 26 again, verse 10. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. John 16, 1 on to 3. John 16, 1 on to 3. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. And you look at John 14, Jesus is the Father. John 15, John 15, verses 16 on the 23. Remember, see, there are those of you who like, I'm being persecuted for Christ. Is it because you are standing for the truth of Scripture and are doing as you can to walk? According to the scripture? Or is it because you want to deceive yourself that you're a saint and there are those out there who are showing you out of love that, hey, you need to consider whether or not you're a saint because you claim to be a saint, but your walk says otherwise. So, I'm being persecuted for Christ. Are you really? Are you really? Huh? Are you really? How would you know the difference? I think you secretly do know, but you're just deceiving yourself. 
it's sad. Because there are some of you who know better, but you're doing it anyway. Yes. Yes. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. But what saith the scripture? Sixteen under twenty three in John fifteen. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. This is not Calvinism, okay? And ultimately you go the way that God has elected, the way of the cross, he's the one who saves you, not you yourself by your own belief, or because you had a cookie, or because you're black, or because you go to, to Phallus House every time the doors are open, or because you speak in blah, blah, blah. Okay? And ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. When saints go to make aware of to the Christian. It's like, hey, you know, you really need to consider whether or not you're saved. Okay? Believe and receive is not the gospel. Rome is Satan's church. Okay? God is not a respecter of persons today, nor of the color of your skin. You being at a phallus house every time the doors are open means nothing. And you're not speaking in actual tongues. Because remember, the tongues and acts were all named. Your blah, 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 is gibberish, satanic gibberish. Okay? You've had a changed life, huh? How? Is it because you're a new creature? Or is it something that you have done? See... See, dude, they come on strong, but after a while, when the things of the world, the thorns, choke the word, and they become unfruitful. Saints sin. Yes. How many times I got to tell you, though? The fake, interestingly enough, like the perfectly round, bale-shaped sun cookie, they go round. Round and round to justify themselves when sooner or later the saint, the cycle is broken because we can't justify ourselves. We can't justify our sin. But see, the fake, it never ends. It never ends. You know what's the most difficult thing for flesh to do? I'm nothing. I'm useless, worthless, hopeless. Forgive me. Flesh hates to admit that we're wrong. Don't we? Oh, that, that hurts. Some do it to put on a shoe. But there again, it's like, okay, that's when you adopt the Missouri mule countenance. Now that's visage or the physical thing. But it's like, okay, I forgive you. Love you, you know. Forgive and forget. You need to show me something. Because the last time I grabbed that pan, wow, I got to see, I still got the third degree burn scar on it. So, uh, you know, I, hey, forgive and forget. Okay, you go your way. I'm going to stay over here. Um, okay, let's show you. Let's see something. I understand that. I do. 
I also believe that there are those that there are some times when you do have to say, okay, I'm going to give you the, I'm going to, I'm going to try, I'm going to do that, okay? There again, you also have to be very careful. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. You claim to be being persecuted for Christ. Are you? Are you? How would you know? How would you know? How would you know? Persecution as a saint comes regardless. When you have to boast about it, boast about it and say that you're constantly being persecuted, that ought to be a warning to you. What saint isn't persecuted? What saint isn't? The same things that are happening to me are happening to the brethren all around the world. Okay? Now, the exact type may differ between you and a brother or a sister. Exactly, sure. But, you know, why are we being persecuted? Just the Father who dwells within us. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. I love Jesus. What Jesus are you talking about, dude? One, uh, one the, the one in the middle? Or the one who is. The one in the middle is not the one who is. That's satanic. Which Jesus? Which Jesus, pal? Which Jesus? Acts 26, verse 11. And I punished them oft in every synagogue. Oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. We're still not done with verse 10. We're still not done with verse 10, where he says again, Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Okay? Paul was persecuted for Christ. See, the thing about Paul is, Paul actually truly believed what he was doing was the right way. He really did. Paul truly in his heart believed that the law was binding. He at the first didn't believe that Christ was the Mashiach, okay, is the Mashiach, excuse me, but he, he but see, he was doing it thinking what he was doing was right. Paul Wanted truth. Paul wanted to do what was right in the eyes of God. And thus, thus, he went forward doing those things to the church, believing in his heart that he was doing the right thing. But see, we read, he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. And the Jews require a sign. The Lord appeared to him. Paul saw the Lord on the road to Damascus. Thus being ordained as an apostle of the Lord, replacing Judas Iscariot. Okay? He saw the Lord. 
Paul was the Lord's choice to replace Judas, not Matthias, which you read about in Acts chapter 1, okay? All right? Paul was the replacement for Judas Iscariot, okay? But until that, Paul was going on truly believing in his heart what he was doing was right. But see, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Again, the very first video in the description box, from murderer to messenger, the Apostle Paul. He actually thought what he was doing was the right thing. But then truth came to him. And truth changed him. What you do with the truth there, pal, says a lot about you. And more often than not, especially with the Christian, I'm better than so-and-so. The easy believers is the worst culprit. <laughs> okay, they really are, you know, they really are. Scratch them, you believe dumbers in heaven and I, I'm, yeah, 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 go on, go on, your God loves you, okay? What do you do with the truth? What do you do with the truth? Hmm? Does the truth change you? Do you conform to the truth or do you try to take the truth and make it conform to you. You have God said! Second Corinthians 11. And see, this is what happened. See, Paul was in error. He did it ignorantly. He didn't know what he was doing was passe. That, you know, Christ fulfilled the law. How? He shed his blood on the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection. We covered this on Wednesday. Okay? Kind of. Okay? So, Paul, who had the zeal, but was just misguided. Jews require a sign. The Lord appeared to him. Ah! Then Paul went on with that. See, this is why, why we started out the way we did. If some of these devils, if some of these people, these Christians, actually got saved, that kind of zeal that they would show trying to justify themselves, if they were to get saved, to justify the Lord, not themselves, there's a big difference. Um, wow, what brethren, what sisters they would make. What sisters, what brethren they would make. You spend a third of that time as a saint justifying the Lord as you spend trying to justify yourself. Wow. 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 Don't wow. But see, here's persecution for Christ's sake. 2 Corinthians 11, 19. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. Paul was giving them a little snarky dig. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, bondage of sin. If a man devour you, if a man take of you, and this ministry has been a blessing to you. Every video, dude. If a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face, I speak as concerning reproach. As though we had been weak, albeit wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. See, you testifying yourselves, Paul's equating with foolishness. He did it because he was kind of left really no other option. I mean, he could have foregone, but it's like, dude, okay? The wearing of the stones. Okay, kind of thing going on here. He did it as a last resort. 
When someone does it at the first incident, okay, they're not a, you want to take, okay, okay. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. The fool says in his heart there is no God, but they themselves. Saints sooner or later will not justify themselves. Why? We can't! <laughs> we can't! We can justify the Lord. Oh, yeah. Who justifies us by his grace through faith. Yes. The Lord. But what happens with Christians? They justify themselves through the Lord, not the Lord through them. And see, that line is so subtly blurred that it's easy to be taken with it. And those who've been saved for years and years and years ought to be the ones showing you the difference. They are. Kiss his hand, huh? Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths off. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Our brother Alexander B. Hartley did that video uh, about the old neighborhood, which will be uh, in the description box. Uh, our brother has that, that gift given of the Lord, okay, uh, where he goes through this about the difference about, okay, we can visit the old neighborhood. But we don't stay there. Okay? That's the difference between a saint and someone who ain't. Okay? That video will be in the description box as well. Beautiful video. Let's continue. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my what? My infirmities. How useless, weak, dirt that we are. But the cycle with the false doesn't end. It doesn't end. You be very careful. And I can say this to you. You be very careful. You be very careful. Because I have put my hand out there before for people who I wanted to believe, who I wanted to be my brother, only to have my hand spit on. I've had that happen quite a bit. I'm the one who... Not always of the best decisions. When everyone's like, Brad, come on, dude. It's like, I'm the type who's like, somebody's got to do it. And unfortunately, on a scale from, eight to, from 1 to 10, about 8 times out of 10, the brethren were like, Brad, what happens? What happens if you don't try? Nothing, right? But see, the result of that is usually not all the time. No, not all the time. No. There have been people who, um, you know, were, were had held the hand out and, okay, yeah, it's legitimate. It's real. Okay? But see, that hurt! 
hurts. That hurts. And brethren, people, in this day and age, it is wise to be the Missourian mule. I forgive you. You, you go that way, I'm going to stay over here. Okay, I forgive you. All right, I forgive you. But uh, I touched that pen, man. And I got that scar. I'm, I'm, you know, you, 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 okay, you, you fine. You, 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 you go, okay? You stay over there. I'll stay over here. And I'll, you know, give a shout out to you every once in a while and see what's going on. But let's see what happens. Show me something. I understand both the thing, like with Paul, uh, Barnabas, and the Barnabas wanting to take Mark, and Paul was like, dude, okay? Paul eventually was like, yes, bring Mark. He's profitable. Okay, eventually. But at the time, Barnabas was like, well, let's bring Mark. Paul's like, ah, dead, dead, dude! <laughs> uh, remember how he left us hanging when we were going out there, you know? Remember that? It's like, well, you, I forgave you. I brought you to the apostles, and Paul's like, ah! Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Okay, was it that way? I did. Stay on point, okay? But eventually, Mark, Paul said, bring him before he's profitable to me in the ministry. Absolutely. At that time, Barnabas was like, come on. And Paul's like, no, no, nay, nay, not yet. It's too soon need to be shown something. And what happened? Barnabas and Paul went asunder. But it was Paul who was recommended unto the grace of God by the brethren. Barnabas, a saint who's up there waiting for us. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. And Mark, profitable unto the ministry. And even a Barnabas, Paul was like after they split asunder. It's like, hey, you know, if he's around... Get, don't don't give him a hiss, okay? In the long run, it paid out, sure. But at that moment, who was who was the one who who was the one who was the one that had the favor of the Lord in that situation? It was Paul. See this? Ow! See, I can say this to you because I've been the Barnabas. I've also been the Paul in that situation. And the longer we go, the more we have to be like the, our example. But, if, but also not neglecting the time when we ought to be like the Barnabas. But see, in time, in time, and it takes time, Time that we don't have. The Lord will be the one to show you that. And see, there again, that's when you really have... I, I can say this to you. That's when you really need to check yourself. Because, like I said, there are people out there, I want to be my brethren. I want them, I want them to be my sister. I do. But it goes round and round and round and round. When Paul encountered truth, truth, he is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ changed him. If truth confronts you, you want to change it. And you think you're saved. Especially. You need to really examine yourself. Saints can mess up. Absolutely. 
But the round, perfectly round, sun-shaped bale cookie will shatter eventually. As it did with Paul. You can't make excuses for yourself. You can't. You can't, as I said, sooner or later. They have to stop. Acts 26, 11. And I punished them off in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. See, again, Paul really believed what he was doing was right until truth got a hold of him and changed him. The Christian today, nine out of ten of them, when a saint, Representing the truth, Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. When a saint usually encounters a Christian, the Christian wants to conform truth to themselves. Nine times out of ten. Nine times out of ten. Acts 17. 13. And see, we see this with the enemies. Like you read in John 8. They justify, justify, justify. When they figure out they can't justify themselves, do they, what wilt thou have me to do, Lord? No, you're a devil. Acts 17, one verse, verse 13. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. You know, a saint, a saint, that, I'm not even going to use that one guy, I don't think he's our brother, but anyway, a saint is on like, YouTube, and then goes to another platform, okay? The devils follow that saint, follow them to cause problems on the new platform, okay? You saw this, for those of you who know, you saw this exemplified with a certain individual. Uh, many people <laughs> jumped ship to one platform but came back to the other platform because of filthy lucre. We won't get into that. And I don't like to use this as an example, but it is an example of how the devils operate. What happened? When God, I'm done here. Go somewhere else. The same devils go over there and do the same thing that they were doing on the other platform. But then again, the other one comes back because it's more financially feasible to be on this one. <laughs> uh, charlatan, anybody. Anyway. Anyway. That's what devils do. They found out that the word of God was being preached by Paul. And what did they do? They followed, they followed where the truth was to attack it. To attack it. Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Psalm 56, verses 5 and 6. Psalm 56, verses 5 and 6. Got to be done by 1 o'clock. But that, that's not up to me. Psalm 56, 5 and 6. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. Pretending to be a visit, your Christian visit. <laughs> they hide themselves. They mark my step, steps when they wait for my soul. You also can read about this in the uh, one verse, uh, the book of Lamentations. Every year, you're thinking about giving into that sin, brother, sister. You read Lamentations. I don't scare the hell out of you. Lamentations 4, verse 18. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our 
streets, our end is near, near. Our days are fulfilled, for our end is come. Verse 19, our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. Now this was a form of judgment, but the point is, the enemies of our Lord do this very thing. Psalm 37, just one verse. Psalm 37, verse 32. Verse 32. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. That's what the enemies do. They watch us saints on how we behave and how we conduct ourselves so that they can learn how to mimic the or emulate that kind of behavior, but all the while they're not one of us in the first place. There are several out there. Um, the, 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 the one Dudley Do-Right guy, Mr. Fig. Okay? They watch someone who they believe is a saint. Who they believe is a saint. And they take that persona and they emulate it. The one Dudley Do-Right idiot, same mannerism, same vocal inflection, same tonality, the same speech pattern, body language. I punished them back in Acts 26, 11, and I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them onto strange cities. Exceedingly mad. Mad's not angry. Mad's crazy. Psalm 102. And you know why they're crazy against us? Because we have what they don't have. And they want what we have. But they're not willing to die to themselves in order that they may receive the grace of God. That's, that's, what, it's, that's what it boils down to. Psalm 102, verse 8. Mine enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are mad against me are sworn against sworn against me. Like Paul, I'm going to do everything I can contrary to the name of Jesus Christ. Then truth got a hold of him and truth changed him. Nine out of ten Christians, they encounter one of us, brother, as you know. Sister, we use the sword which, the, which uh, divideth asunder spirit and soul and the joints and marrow. Hebrews 4.12. Look it up. And they want to take truth and make it fit them. Hence, find a Bible that fits you, right? Luke 15. Luke 15. Like I said, there are people out there I want, I want them to be my brother or my sister. I really do. I do. I do. But see, we have to understand it's not, God is not a God of coercion. And they have to be broken. And see, when someone like the free gracer denies brokenness, and calls a requirement a work. You've, you're, 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 you're gone from the get-go. That's why a majority of these free gracers, Catholics, <laughs> certain Baptists and Pentecostals, and you know, the black Hebrew Israelites, they're, they're wow, wow. A black Hebrew Israelite, they can come out of that heresy. Yes, they can. God can save anybody, but it's not like gunpoint. But see, you have to die before you can be raised up. You have to be broken before you can be fixed. And 
anyone mark my words, anyone who refutes brokenness as a requirement, they ain't been broken, they ain't saved. And you see, this is where you have to take on the mentality of a Missouri mule. Show me something. Because someone who, who had a, an, a little thing, a little change for a while, but then that change goes away because it was of man. And yet, all of a sudden, it's like, okay, I, I'm safe now. We'll see. We'll see. I understand. I understand that there are people that you want to be your brother. I understand also love for someone whom you shouldn't. I understand. Oh, I had an uh, before I was saved. I had an affair with a married woman. I thought I loved her, and I did in all the wrong ways. I did. I did. In all the wrong ways. I wanted her to be mine. But there was no way. I understand that. Because I have been there. When I was lost. Again, there are people that I want to be our brethren. I really, really do. But see, you gotta get over yourself, man. You've claimed to have, okay. I'm gonna hold you at an arm's distance. And we'll see. And see, that is when you come to this, and this is the standard because you can have your own preconceived notions because of a desire to see said individual, whoever he or she may be, to be yours, right? Or to be a brother or sister. You got to be careful. Besides, what if there's something right under your nose you're not seeing? Because you're fixed on something that you should not. There, there is a point when, you know, like with the children of Israel. The Lord said in the book of Numbers, okay, go, see that? That's the promised land. Go get it. I'm going to be with you. We're going to do, you're going to do this. We're going to do this. Just trust me. Let's go get it. What happened? They didn't. We're as grasshoppers in their sight and they want to go back to Egypt. They blew it. They blew it. That thing had passed. There was another opportunity. Exactly. In time. Yes. But that specific thing passed. I forget who it was and I hate to say it but I, because it's Going around in my head, you can't always get what you want. And praise the Lord! You can't always get what you want. Praise the Lord! Oh, praise you, God, my Father, Jesus Christ. If, I, if He had given me everything I'd want, I'd be dead! I'd be dead! you want? Luke 15, 3 on the 7. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth 
more than over 99 just pers persons which need no repentance. Now, some will look at that for instruction and in righteousness. Well, saints don't need to be saved because we're already sealed until the day of redemption. That's true. But, I, I'm saved because I just believe. I, 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 I had the cookie. I drank the wine. Okay? I'm black. Okay? I speak in tongues. I'm at the church building every time the doors are open. Okay? I, I've had a changed life. Sure, I had a changed life. Yeah. They're righteous in their own eyes. They don't need repentance. Oh, especially with the scum free grace. Well, that's a work. You're, what's that What's that phrase that cutie pie always likes? Uh, oh, what is it? What is it? You're back-loading works unto salvation. <laughs> that's, a, that's a brilliant statement. Statement of a lost person. Only lost people say that. Because they don't want to die to themselves. And we have to be reminded. In Revelation chapter 9. Book of Revelation. Book of Revelation is not doctrinally for us today. There's a lot of instruction in righteousness. There are some things that cross dispensational lines. Yes. But in its totality it's not for us today. But the point is, during that time, during the time of Jacob's trouble, that happens after we, the body of Christ, be redeemed, okay, what, what's going to happen is, the body of Christ is not on the earth. It is not by grace or faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. Get over yourself, you wicked devils. It is not. It's by faith and works. Okay? But the point that we're going to look at is, during that time period of the time of Jacob's trouble, that time period is going to make World War II, especially the time of the Holocaust of the Jew, where over 6 million Hebraic Jews were murdered, uh, it's going to make that time period look like nothing. The time period of the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be so severe, it's going to dwarf all the world wars up to that point as in comparison of nothing. With all that calamity, all that catastrophe going on, the trumpets, the moons, the, the judgments, and all this chaos. Revelation 9, just one verse, 21. No, 20 and 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver, and brass and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, pharmakeia, okay, we'll leave that one alone, okay, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Body of Christ is not on the, the earth at that time. It is by faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble, not by grace through faith. Watch out for those devils. Point. Under all that chaos and calamity, there are still going to be, and this is before the giving of the mark of the beast. Oh, wait, that's right. The book of Revelation isn't chronological. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway. This is before the mark of the beast. So what does that mean? There are people who have gone past the point of no return. And in this dispensation, time of check of trouble, you take that mark, you're doomed. You're gone. You're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. There's no turning back when you take the mark of the beast. Read Hebrews 6. Okay? And see, that's the deception of Christianity with the ecumenical Roman Catholic pond scum doctrine that has in, infected all the divisions of the, of the divided Christ of Christianity with their easy believism, just believe and receive doctrine. We get taken out. You're going to believe that. You're going to take the mark of the beast and you're going to go to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. Okay? Point. This is before the mark of the beast. 
people who will not be broken. Not that God can't save them. And we're talking, this is the time of Jacob's trouble. It's faith and works. Eternal security is not there, except for the 144,000 Jews, okay? But for today, to instruct us in righteousness and this, there are people who will not be saved. Not that God cannot save them. But they trust in their heart. Revelation 16. Revelation 16, after the mark of the beast. Verse 19. Uh, and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath first let's read to the close of the chapter and every island fled away and the mountains were not found and there fell upon men great hail out of heaven every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plagues of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. They blasphemed God. Now this is after the giving of the mark of the beast. Once you take that mark of the beast, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. You can't lop it off, gouge it out. That's heresy. No, once you do that, you're, you're done. Points. Now you can, in this, obviously tie into the mark of the beast. But to instruct us and righteousness again for today. There are going to be people who are going to be on a sinking submarine. Sinking sub. Okay. They're doomed. They see the water coming, but yet it won't be broken. That's why the Lord said in Jeremiah, pray not for this people. Why? Because there's no room in the heart for someone who is their own God. Truth is supposed to change you. You don't change the truth to fit your narrative. There are people, like I said, I want certain people out there to be my brother or my sister. I just love it. Be great. I, 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 I would even have a, not a live stream, but I'd even Skype with the, the talk show host if he were my brother. I would. I'd be, I'd be happy to call that man my brother. I would. Is it going to happen? Probably not. Is it possible? Of course. Is it going to happen? Probably not. Because Why? Truth comes, repentance is a work. <laughs> you go on justifying yourself there, 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 sweetie pie. Go right ahead. Okay? The, the circle of your bail cookie never ends. I wish it would. You have an affection. Praise the Lord. Like Paul, he wished that he could be accursed, that others could be saved. He meant that, though. Do you say that so you can fulfill a loss, or that you really wish that were the case? That you would forgo salvation, which you can, hypothetical, in order to see someone saved. Do you say that to gratify your own self? Or do you mean it like Paul did? careful that is going to be it for this little video thank you for watching this if you do I hope this chafes some of you I really do I really do time is short you need to be sure want to know how come let us reason together you and I it's time you wake up.
pray for us. Like I said, we got a lot of stuff going on. Um, this weekend's going to be busy. Uh, uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley, um, sorry, uh, brother from Oregon, and other brethren who tried to get a hold. I'm sorry. I give you no excuse. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Okay. A lot of stuff going on. That's no excuse. I love you. Please keep us in your prayers. Hey, Brother Jeff. Traveling in style now, brother. With that that, uh, that car of yours that you got. Amen, brother. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be it. Going to get this uploaded. I love you. Thank you for watching. If you do, we'll see you in the next video.